One of the best ways to help your band prepare best for rehearsal is to create rehearsal tracks. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take an Ableton Live session with stems and generate rehearsal tracks for individual musicians in your band. So I'm in the middle preparing for two performances in Nashville, one on Sunday that's a kind of all-star get together of different artists, and then one on Monday that is a Christmas special. One of the things I've been doing a lot of is generating rehearsal tracks. What I've been doing is essentially taking an Ableton Live session like this one with a song, and rendering out a version of the full song with click and guides, rendering out a version without lead vocals. And I wanna show you in this video how to do that. Plus in addition to say, okay, what do I do if um, I want to render a version that's just got piano and maybe just render the piano part with click and guide so that people can uh, practice with it. This really is gonna help improve band rehearsal. It's gonna help people uh, get better uh, and come in more prepared. And particularly this is gonna help them practice on their own so they, before they show up to rehearsal, they'll be prepared and ready to go. So uh, let's dive in and get started. So I've got this song. Uh, this is a version of Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. Now, because of copyright reasons, I can't play this song for you, but I can show you the exact steps I took to make this happen. So what I'm gonna do is take my session. The first thing I wanna do is render out, um, let's say render out the full song with click and guides with lead vocal, okay? I happen to have stems that have lead vocals in it. We're not gonna use the lead vocals for the performance, but we are using them for rehearsal because we have a couple different artists coming in, they can't be there, and this is a genius way to rehearse without them, and then when we show up for the actual performance, we mute their vocals. So here's what I'm gonna do with this set. First thing I'm gonna do is press tab to go over to session view. I'm gonna to go to my click and guide, and I'm gonna take these out of, uh, see where they say they're routed to external out. I'm gonna take and send these to master, okay? You can see master is set to one and two over here. These are gonna to go to the master track. Now the way I have this file set up in particular, I'm using return tracks to manage all my audio routing. Um, and you can see I have a lead vocal track and I have this set so that I can make sure when it comes time for live performance, I can press that button and make sure that is turned off. I'm gonna turn the volume down to make sure I don't have an Ashley Simpson moment and vocals accidentally slip through. Uh, because we're not using lead vocals, no one's lip syncing for this, they're purely for rehearsal sake. In fact, I may go through and delete the lead vocals once we actually start to make sure I don't actually do that. I accidentally do that and lose a job because that would be very, very bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna render a version again with lead vocals. I've got click and guide going. Um, right now, I'm okay with click and guide just being in the stereo file, but if you're a fan of kind of the old school um, Jamie Abersaw practice uh, backing tracks or version where you have click to the left, metronome to the left, and the rest of the band to the right, you could do that by just taking your click and panning that and guide, panning that to the left. You could take your master track, pan that to the right and set everything to the right and render out if you want to. Um, I don't want that, but I'll just leave that set for now. Okay, just so you could see how we would do that. Then what I'm gonna do is select all the content, select the full song, uh, and I'm gonna do Command L or Control L to set my loop brace. Then I'm gonna do Command Shift R, which is our keyboard shortcut to render or export audio. If you're on a PC, it's Control Shift R. And we're gonna open up this export audio video uh, window here. I have everything up here disabled. The only thing I've disabled is MP3 because I want to actually share MP3s with um, my bandmates. I don't want to generate WAV files and email those because those are massive. I don't care about quality. This is just for practice and rehearsal. So we're going to leave the MP3s on here. I'm going to hit export. Okay, then it's going to open this file menu here. I'm going to go to desktop and we're going to call this rocking around. Uh, we'll call this with vocal. Okay. All right, and that's gonna render, uh, it's gonna render faster than real time, which means it's offline bouncing. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna hit cancel so we can keep going. Okay, so now let's render one without lead vocals. This is real simple. I could leave the same exact setup that I have, but this time because I have um, uh, everything set to a return track, I'm just gonna disable that. And I'm gonna go through and render. And this time I would say export and I would do rocking around without vocals and run a version of that without vocals, which is really, really great. Now, one of the things you may want to do though, for the sake of uh, your bandmates to learn their parts, to practice, to rehearse with, this takes a little bit of work, is render individual instrument rehearsal tracks for them. This is something you wanna sit down and you take some time to do. Um, there's some ways to do this with re return tracks that maybe speed this up. But the way I have this set set up, here's what I wanna do. I wanna say, I wanna take the piano part of rocking around the Christmas tree. Actually, as I'm talking, let me make sure there is a piano part for this one. Uh, there is, okay, great. And I want to send the piano player. Okay, here's the piano part with click and guide. 
And then I want to send the piano player. Here's the full song without piano. So you can actually practice with that before we show up to rehearsal. But before I do that, I want to actually ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. I post a brand new tutorial that's going to show you how to perform on stage like a pro with Ableton Live every single day for free on the channel. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and enable the bell icon so you see exactly when tutorials like that go live. Okay, let's dive back in and let's talk about creating those specific uh, instrument part tracks. So. What I have set up here is all my stems for my song. Again, we've got click and guide going to the left. Um, we'll leave that for this one. I think this one's actually gonna uh, work well. I'm gonna close my return tracks down so we can see it. And then I have my piano part here, okay? What's really nice about this, I did use return tracks, so I could do this on return tracks, but I'm gonna pretend you didn't just for a moment. Uh, and what I wanna do is I wanna take everything else other than my piano, and we're gonna just turn that down just for a, a, a second, okay? So we'll turn all these down, including uh, this group here, and we're gonna leave our piano where it is, and we're gonna leave our click and guide where it is, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, same process to render this out and we'll do export, right? And then I would say, um, rock around the Christmas tree, piano, maybe boosted or something boosted. Okay. And then I'm going to export that and I'm going to export that out. Now that's going to be for the piano player. The next thing I want to do though, is render a track without piano. So then what I could do, this is pretty simple. Let's just reverse what we did here where we brought all these levels down. Uh, this time let's mute our piano. Again, I've got return tracks here, so I could go in and just go to piano itself and, um, and mute that, which would be the easiest way to do that. But um, for the sake of this, I'm gonna mute piano uh, and we'll leave everything else going. And I'm gonna render this out again with encode MP3 on. I'm gonna export and then we could say uh, no piano, right? And what's great about this is the piano player then could get a track with click and guide that they're, they're rehearsing with, with the full band. They may just want click and guide to rehearse with, so we could do that as well too. Um, but they can have the exact things that they need uh, to practice with before they show up, show up for rehearsal. And what I love about this is they're practicing with the exact arrangement we're doing. Yes, we could tweak it, we could change it live in the moment, but they're practicing with the exact arrangement with the exact stems. If you happen to have like a recording of your rehearsal that's multi-tracked, that's a great way to rehearse as well too. If you have someone that's subbing in for a specific show, because your guitar player is sick, your bass player, she can't make it, and you have someone just filling in, record your rehearsal, multi-track it, and then just send them the bass parts elevated, send them tracks without bass, the bass out. And it's gonna take a little bit of work, but the thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna equip your bandmates to come in to have a successful rehearsal, and a successful rehearsal leads to a successful performance. So that's a look at how to quickly generate rehearsal tracks in Ableton Live if you have your stems. Again, like I said, if you want more tips and tricks like this on how to perform like a pro with Ableton Live, make sure to subscribe, enable the bell icon, post a brand new tutorial every single day at 10 a.m. Central, and I don't want you to miss out. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye.